everybody, it's Kathy Champion and you're back in my craft room at Random Acts of Crafting. And I'd like to welcome everybody here. It is the um, New Year's Eve Eve. This is actually, uh, I'm recording this on Monday evening, Monday night actually. This will probably go up uh, sometime tomorrow, which will be New Year's Eve. So I just want to wish everybody a very, very happy New Year's first and foremost. And again, I just want to say thank you for all of your love and support. It means the world to me, and I could not do this without all of you. And I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for all of the comments, all of the encouraging words, um, the support for always tuning in and watching my videos. You know who you are. And uh, all of you that have shopped at my store, the ones that have taken advantage of my sales, every order that's been placed has been uh, filled with love from my heart and such um, gracious appreciation for your business. And I just want to let everyone know that uh, going into the coming year, um, I'm hoping for bigger and brighter things. We are at my last look, I believe. Let me, let me check it real quick. And let's see. I'm going to tell you exactly... Uh, where we're at as far as our count goes we were like 35 away this afternoon and I don't know if I don't think I've gotten any more subscribers um, it's show my numbers fluctuate on here and and I really don't think I've lost subscribers earlier it said 465 now it says 464 I don't know if this is a true count sometimes when I go in the back office of uh, YouTube where I actually upload my videos and that sort of thing um, the number will be quite different than what it shows on the front so I'm not sure what's going on there sometimes it'll be more sometimes less but nevertheless um, we are about 35 36 subscribers away from giving away the wonderful prize package and that will be when I reach 500 subscribers so uh, if you have not entered this giveaway, look for my video, just click on the tab that says videos and scroll down and there's one video that's, in t that's titled, Let's Talk. If you will click on that video and watch it, it's not a very long one, it will explain to you how to enter this uh, contest. It will al also show you exactly what's in the uh, prize package that will be given away to one lucky member. So. I'll say all that, and then we're going to move on to our uh, card that I have for you today. And yes, I, am, I have gone back to cards, and I, I plan on doing a, maybe one more card before the end of the year. But I thought this is a time that everybody is dealing with sickness. I'm sure you know someone in your family, someone that um, uh, has maybe come down with Eh, just not feeling quite so good, um, things like that. So I thought this would be the perfect time. Let me see if I can find my inspiration. I had it on here just a moment ago. And let's see. Okay. Sometimes they change Pinterest around. And, and then I have trouble finding what I'm looking for. But let's do a search, and here we go. What I'm going to do today is going to be um, a 6x6 card, and it is going to be a uh, double Z fold. And it seems like everybody appreciates a, col a card that's just not the um, ordinary uh, A2 size flip up or flip out type card. Now don't get me wrong, those cards can be absolutely gorgeous depending on how we um, embellish them. But I thought I would do a little something different for everybody today. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start out with this beautiful piece of, it's a rich um, royal purple. And it, the cam, I guess because of my lights, it's not, it doesn't look as, as dark in the picture. This is a very deep royal purple. And I found this piece of designer paper that has a, a hint of lavender or just a tone, undertones. It looks gray, but it has some undertones of lavender in it. 
And I thought, how pretty would these two papers look together? So I'm going to make my card base out of this, and we're going to decorate with that paper. And then we're going to go back and do some embellishments. But this is going to be a get well card because I know that during this cold and flu season, we all have someone that has been under the weather, maybe not so much um, sick with a cold. Maybe you know someone who's had surgery. Um, maybe you know someone that has just not felt well, maybe plagued with headaches or uh, stomach issues or whatever. This would be a beautiful card to send to anyone. And I think, I think getting a card when you feel bad and you're kind of down um, can be so uplifting. So it is important for us to uplift one another uh, with our cards and our, um, our craft. We all love to make cards. And what's better than making a card than sending a card? I always love to send cards to people that I care about. So... What I'm going to do is I am going to score this in half. So this is a 6 by 12, and I am going to score it at 6. Very simple, nothing complicated, just a simple 6 by 6 card. Now I'm going to turn this over, and I'm going to, I'm going to get my edges together first because we all know that paper is not always square. So I'm going to line these up as even as I possibly can. And see, even though I scored that on the 6, it is off just a little bit. This will ensure that your card has a nice, crisp, and very straight fold. And it's the little things like this that can make your cards look so beautiful. Just taking the extra time to make sure that you get your creases good and that your scores are um, nice and even. Now, we're going to do a card within a card to give it that double Z fold. So, the, the one that we're going to put inside is going to be probably, and I haven't measured this out yet because I just basically looked at the picture on Pinterest. So, let me take my ruler and we are going to have that piece to go about to here. piece is going to fold back. We're going to score this one more place, so let's bring back out our scoreboard. I got carried away. Right, we scored at 6. We're also going to score at 3 because we're going to need that flap to fold back on the front. So let's score this at 3. Just like that. And then we're going to fold this back. And again, you want to make sure that it centers up very even with that score line that you did in half. So hold it with your butt, with your fingers and use your bone folder to press that down. And now the card is going to be like this. Now your next piece is going to attach to this piece and come over and then it's going to glue back here to the back. So I need to check and see exactly what size I want that piece to be. I know I want it to be shorter than this card. So we're going to take an inch off of this piece. So let's just move that over here and get our trimmer back. So let's take one inch. And I'm just going to cut it on this side over here because that gives me a nice inch without having to pull my arm out. It's a nice way to cut an inch off when you're... Um, when you don't have a lot of room, I've got my scoreboard up here. Now I'm going to save this piece because we can definitely use that a little bit later for some embellishments. Now I'm going to lay this out up here on top of my card like that. And we're going to have mats on here so it's not going to look like it's fading into each other because we're going to mat these pieces. So we're going to bring this out. I'm looking back at my picture. And this is going to need to come out to about, let's see, this is 12, and that's 12. Let's take this to 8. So I'm going to, I am going to cut this off at 8 inches. So that's going to end up being um, 5 by 8. Let's see. Yep. 5 by 8 is what this piece is going to be. So what we're going to do is we're going to want this piece to come right to here. 
I might have to go back and re revisit this, but I want this to come over to uh, about three and a half. So I'm going to score this at three and a half. And I haven't worked this all out, so I may have to go back and revisit and cut another piece of this. But if we do, that's okay. So we're going to score this at three and a half. So right there is three and one half. And I'm going to go ahead and put a fold on it. And I'm just going to make sure that that is nice and even and squared up. And that looks really good. I like to build my card and then um, then I like to uh, adhere it to where I want it to live. Yeah, and see this piece should have we're going to need a larger piece of this. So I'm going to cut another piece and I might even just do a piece of white because I'm going to build this first and then we'll go back. So for right now let's just do a piece of white. And I'm going to leave that at 11, and we're going to cut it down to 5. So 5 by 11. And this is the way I do when I sit down to do a card, um, and I don't really have a recipe or um, spelled out directions on how to do it. I'll just sit and play with some scrap paper. Um, sometimes some good paper like this to until I get it worked out and then I can actually bring it to you. Maybe that's what I should have done with this. Maybe I should have, you know, kind of fidgeted through this before I actually brought it. But we'll see how this goes. Alright, so we want this to go to maybe here. So let's measure that over and see. Let's do that to four and three quarters. So four and three quarters will take us right here. And let's bring that back because that's going to live here. And then this piece needs to go down right about here. So we're going to go maybe to eight. And let's see if we can get that zigzag fold that we're looking for. Okay, this will go up and this will go back. Get my folds going the right way. So you're going to have a mountain valley, mountain valley fold. And then you're going to bring this piece over and this piece is going to live here and this piece right there. And what you're going to want this to do is come together just like this. So now when you open this card up, this will be glued down and you will have this Z fold just like that. Isn't that going to be pretty? See what I mean? And how cute is that? It's like having a card within a card. And this really isn't hard because as you can see, you have this little V uh, fold here. Actually looks like a W. And then you have almost the same thing there. And all you do is just put them together like this. And you'll glue them down. And then you'll decorate them. But before we glue anything down, we are going to mat this piece. I may leave this one in the white. Um, I think that may be a nice little contrast. And we might even do a little bit of... Um, um, inking because I know I've had some of my subscribers to say that they have difficulty with um, inking. So before we go any further I want to measure, I know this is going to be 3 by 6 because it was half of the front of our card and I know that the height of our card is 6 inches. So I want to cut this at uh, 2 and 3 fourths by 4 and 3 fourths. And this has writing on it. It looks like it's got script writing on it. So I want to make sure that I cut that so it's going in the right orientation. So I'm going to cut the two and 
three quarters strip off first. So I'm just going to put that in there and slice it. And then I'm going to cut it lengthways to four and three quarters. So four and three quarters. And three fourths. I don't want to confuse anyone. I sewed back in the day, so that's the reason I usually use the one quarter, uh, three quarters, um, because to me, everything was in quarters, and it was just the way I learned to sew, and oh, I cut that wrong. That's okay, we have another piece, so no, no loss. We'll just glue this on here. I cut it at five instead of six, so I was short an inch. No, no loss. I look at it like this, I got scrap paper. So let's put this in at six or five and three quarters. I think I cut it on four and three quarters. Okay. And that's what I get when I'm talking. I usually make mistakes. <laughs> you know, I'm sure you know that when you're trying to think a card out, it's hard enough to do it if you're still and quiet. Uh, but when you're trying to explain it as you go, sometimes it can get a little daunting. But that's going to loop right there. And I'm trying to decide, do I want that stark white? Or do I want to go with something a little bit darker? I think I want to do a... Um, I am so indecisive. Maybe I want to do a... Trying to decide if I want to do... Maybe I could cover a piece. I have this beautiful um, pack. This is the Timeless Texture. Again, this is just like the other pack that I showed you in the last card we did. And this is designer paper. And when I'm looking for a color, a lot of times I will hold my paper like this until something just stands out to me. And I'm thinking I want to go with something lighter. And I really like that against the white. So why don't we do that? We'll, cut, we'll take a piece of this out and we'll cover that white piece with this. Why not? I think it would be really pretty. Um, it would give us some different tones, tone on tone. And uh, it gives us an opportunity to play with our colors, which can be so stunning on a card if you uh, have a good eye for color. I don't always have a good eye for color, I have to admit. But um, I love pretty paper. So that's, that's half the battle right there, is loving the pretty paper. Now I think... While I'm cutting, I'm also going to cut a mat for inside of here. And I think I want to do this out of the... I'll tell you what, let's get this piece covered first. Let's go ahead and cover this piece. So we know that this piece is four and three quarters. So I'm going to do this one at four and a half. Four and a half by four and three quarters. So four and a half by four and three quarters. I hope everybody's having a very good day. And uh, let's see, that was four and a half, so four and three quarters. This is going to go on here, just like that. I think that's going to be gorgeous on there. Let's put this against this. What I'm going to do is just kind of do a dry run to see how I'm going to like these colors. I like that. The white in the back, this white is really bringing it out. I really think I like the way that's going to look. So now we need to do a piece for this side. And I'm going to continue with this color. So. I am going to cut a piece off of here. Let's measure this. Again, I'm bringing you along for the process of how 
I would do this if I saw a card and I didn't have measurements because this will help you um, figure out how to do a card if you just see a picture of one and there's so many on Pinterest oh my goodness so that's three and a quarter so we're going to cut that at three by four and a quarter so we're going to cut it three inches this way by four and three quarters this way and I'm going to I want, the reason I keep turning my paper, it has little florals, and I want those to live at the bottom of my card. So that's why I'm turning the paper to get that. Okay, four and three quarters. And then this is going to live on here. And then we're going to need another piece right here, which is going to be... A little bit less than this one. And this is going to be two and three quarters by four and three quarters. Two and three quarters. So again, we're going to put this in here and cut it on the two and three quarters. By four and three quarters. there and since this is going to be glued down that piece we don't need anything there so let's go ahead and glue these mats on I do want to cut one more mat to go on the back of this so that's going to be a five and three quarter by five and three quarter so let's do that right here five and three fourths and three fourths and then let's move this one over away and see if we can go ahead and put the paper onto our card base so I'm going to start out first with putting this uh, paper down I'm trying to decide which way I think we're going to go this way I like that running down the corner of that I think it's very pretty very attractive and it makes such a pretty statement so I'm going to use my art glitter glue. This is another place you could use your snail um, or your tape runner or you could use score tape, um, sticky tape, whichever kind of uh, double-sided tape that you use. But I'm just going to put a little art glitter glue on it. And I like using my art glitter glue and I will tell you if you're a new crafter the glue is so much easier to use because you do have a little wiggle room. Once you put those papers down, um, a lot of times you don't have room or time to move them around, um, but you do if you use the glue. You'll have a little bit of wiggle room. Not much, but a little. So I'm going to go ahead and just put some glue on here. this down like that and then this one is going to go right here on the end just like that now we've built those panels now we need to come back and build these panels and we're going to do the same thing. We're just going to glue this down to the front panel, this little half panel. And I'll probably, I may come back and put one there, but let's see before we get our card glued together. We'll make that decision. And that's what I want you to do when you're working on a card like this. You know, pull out your papers, um, cut your pieces, and then decide um, how you want to decorate. If you want to add a little bit more. If you want to put mats somewhere that I didn't, add a mat. Um, this is what makes your cards yours. And it is always so nice 
to um, to do that. down just a little bit. See what I mean about having a little bit of wiggle room? Doesn't give you a lot, but it does give you some. Okay, now let's put this together. And just like this. And I don't think we need anything there because that part is going to be covered anyway. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue the back panel I think first. I think here I want it to glue down first and then once we get this glued down we can embellish and decorate our card ever how we see fit. So, But the first thing I want to do is decide exactly where I want this to live and I'm going to make some little tick marks on my card itself. I did not get that on there straight, but we know what, we're going to cover, we're going to put some embellishments on it, so I'm not even going to stress about it, we're going to go with it. If that bothers you, by all means, cut you another piece and redo it, but I'm not going to stress over it, it is fine the way it is. So I am going to center this where I want it. And I am going to take a pencil and I am just going to make a tiny little square there and there. And that will pretty much tell me that I can put glue within the confounds of that area. So I'm just going to do this. And I'm going to take my pencil and I'm going to go back and just take that off just in case it shows. And now I'm going to sit this back down right where my glue was. Just like that. I did come up a little bit high, but I'm just going to take one of my little claws and wipe that off. Now, when I turn this over, I'm going to put glue on the back side of this, and then we're just going to close the card. And that will give us the perfect placement for our card within a card. And we're just going to fold that over, press it down, and now we have our card is built. Now we can go ahead and embellish this. We can put a, put a, a get well on the front of it. You can decorate this card ever how you want to. And like I said, once you learn how to make a card like this, it will make it so simple to make a card anytime that you want one for whatever occasion, whether it be um, a birthday card, uh, thinking of you, um, a get well. You could do this even as a Christmas card. What a beautiful Christmas card this would make. So, you know, keep these in your little library of cards. You know, you might want to run through um, putting one of these together and then making your notes on the front of it. Do it out of plain white paper. Make your notes on the card and then put it into a plastic bag and, and store it in with your card recipes or your card um, catalog whatever you call your um, amount of cards that you save that you might want to reproduce down the road. Uh, that way, if you decide one day, I need to make a really quick get well card, oh, what can I do? You can actually go and look into this little folder or whatever, and you can find a card like this with the measurements and everything already there. Pull it out, and you can put it together in no time flat. Just a great way to do a card. So, Let's go ahead now and let's go ahead and, and stamp out. I am using, this is one of Tracy and Bill's stamp sets, and this one was called Get Well Soon. And I am going to stamp off some of these um, images. So the first thing I want is 
praying for a speedy recovery because I think everybody that's going through an illness would appreciate um, those words as well as get well soon and this bowl of soup with the spoon just so much says get well so I'm going to stamp these out I think I'm going to wait on these two I'm going to stamp the soup first and what I want to do in stamping this I want to um, get a stamp block I grabbed a bigger one than I need but that's okay as long as it's not too small, too big is not going to matter. I'm going to stamp this down and then I'm going to do some coloring. And I'm going to color it using my Nouveau markers. And I think I told you on the last video, I do have more Nouveau markers coming in. They, um, uh, the order has been placed. Um, I have not got confirmation of when it ships yet. So I'm hoping that tomorrow or Friday, it will, tomorrow or Thursday, it will ship. So, uh, with tomorrow being a holiday, it may not. The holiday has definitely slowed down the process of getting my uh, some of my orders. But I have some new papers coming in. I have um, some new items coming in from uh, We Are Memory Keepers and uh, Tonic Studios. I have some new inks, markers, some more of the stands that y'all have asked about. So, I can't wait to get those in, and as soon as I do, I will come on with a video and let you know that the store's been updated and all of the new stuff is there. And you know what I just did? I stamped that in the Versafine, and I want to use my alcohol markers, and that won't work. So, let's do this. I'm just going to use my little um, microfiber, and I'm just going to wipe that ink off. No, no biggie. Just take that ink away. And I'm going to pull out my Memento because with the Memento ink, I know that I can use uh, my alcohol markers with no problem. And that's, that's what I want. I want to be able to use those beautiful colors. They are my markers of choice. Um, I love the way they color. I think they're so, um, they're so easy to blend your colors. And I love the way they look. Okay, I'm just going to press that down really good. And I'm, I am using that mouse pad. Beautiful image. Just beautiful. I'm going to do one more. Looks like I got a little fuzz right there. I don't know if you can see that. But right there looks like a little fuzz. And it might have came off of my, my fiber. I'm not sure. So, when in question, I'm going to grab my little scrubby, my little scrubber, and I'm just going to go across it a couple of times just to make sure that I'm not carrying any vent. Sometimes you get lint on your ink pad. Um, you don't realize it, but you do, and you will pick it up on your stamps. So let's try this one again. Oh, that's better. I'm not seeing that little hair right there. Nobody wants hair in their soup. <laughs> so, um, especially if you don't feel good. I mean, come on, I don't want it in there anytime, but especially if I don't feel good. Okay, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to color this. So I'm going to move this out of my way. I think I'm going to trim off the top one just to get it out of my way. I think I might trim this down here. And I am going to decide what color do I want my bowl. And I think I'm going to go in for the darker, maybe the purple. This is um, 441. And I'm going to use a little piece of scrap. Let's try it up here. And what I do when I do this, I want something that's going to coordinate with that paper. And that looks pretty close. Let's try this one. 
Nope, that's too light. And let's try this one. That's definitely too light. Okay, so I'm going to go with this one. And I'm going to do the top of my, maybe the bottom of my bowl. I think I want the bottom of it to be this nice dark purple. Mm, that's not coloring very well. You know why? <laughs> let's let's regroup on that one. I'm gonna pull this one back out, and I'm gonna grab my glasses because whenever I'm coloring, especially with the alcohol markers, I need to be able to see all of my little places that I'm going. And the alcohol markers do bleed, so when you're coloring with them. On your lines, you need to be very, very careful. Now, all I'm going to do is outline with this darker. I'm just going to outline. Just like that. Then I'm going to come back in with... Middle, the middle color, which is 439. Then I'm going to come in with the lighter color. Oops. back in with 441. Now I'm going to cut this bowl of soup out. these back up because I want to keep them in order. 437, 439, and 441. That's another great thing about this um, storage system for these markers. It works so beautifully because you can put your markers into your um, right in front of you and you can pull them out as you need them. I do want to forewarn anyone that if you're using these alcohol markers and you do not have a glass surface like I do, make sure you put a piece of plastic um, packaging or something under to protect your surface because if you color on a, on a mat like this one, it will bleed through and you will have stains on your mat. Um, how do I know this? Because I learned the hard way and I ended up um, messing up one of my mats and I had to replace it. I mean, it didn't hurt the mat, but it was just, it was ugly. And I didn't appreciate it looking like that. So I went ahead and got another mat for that reason. Okay, so I don't want to get any um, coloring on my noodles. So I am going to grab a brown. I think I'm going to get 472 and 478. This is uh, garlic, clove, and brown sugar. And I'm going to go in with the lighter one first. And I'm going to color all of my noodles the same color. You know, what is better than a bowl of ramen 
or chicken noodle soup or you know what I love I love egg drop soup it's my favorite every time we get Chinese I always get egg drop soup because for me egg drop soup and um, an egg roll and that's a meal so I do I do love it so I'm gonna go back with this uh, darker color which is brown sugar and I'm just going to do ever so often a darker noodle here and there just to give it a little interest you know our noodles aren't all the same color and see that just gives you some contrast into your bowl of noodles which always makes it interesting and now for our spoon I'm going to go in with a gray and I'm going to do 487 because I want this to look more like a um, you know, silver spoon, not silver, so to speak, but our stainless steel. When I eat ramen, I love to eat it with a fork. I love to twirl the noodles on a fork. And I usually want a spoon, too, because I like the soup as well. My husband says I'm weird. <laughs> and he would know. But that I think is very pretty. Now I'm gonna cut, I'm gonna fussy cut this out, and you might wonder, well, what are you? How are you gonna do that smoky little plume? And that's gonna be a really easy thing to do. And I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna cut off that excess where it ran, just like that. Now I'm moving my my paper, not my scissors. And see how easy it is to clean that up just by trimming it out. And I'm going to go in and get that plume of, of steam. because when you put this on our card this is going to actually be popped up a little bit so I'll show you exactly what I have in mind for this bowl of soup off like that to make it look a little more appealing so let's put a, bo a bowl of soup right there we're going to cut this little spoon out this is the neat thing about having um, different stamps in your stamp um, uh, collection you can always find something and if you don't have a um, a, a, a die cut machine or if you don't have um, any type of electronic cutting machine like a um, brother scan and cut or a um, Cricut you can still stamp out your images you can color them and you can still make a beautiful card now do I love my tools yes y'all know I do and I say if you got them use them I'm gonna put that spoon like right about there because I want it to look like, or maybe I might even prop the spoon like this. We'll see. I haven't finished getting all the little bits and pieces ironed out of here. I know that I want to put, and I might even go back and put a little bit of blue. Let's see, what color would I like to use? How about a gray? How about this gray? This is a Nouveau. Um, glitter marker and these are absolutely beautiful um, I wonder how this would look we might just do it around the edges
to make it look steamy. I think that looks really good. So, let's put that back in there. And of these, um, the Nouveau stands hold all kinds of markers. So, not just your um, Nouveau alcohol markers, but this pen system will hold a, a multitude of different types of markers. So, just so you'll know, a little PSA. I want my praying for a speedy recovery. I'm going to I'm going to stamp this down because I think I want to use a die cut or either a punch and punch this out. So I'm going to go ahead and load it up on my block. Let's peel this one off. Now this one has not been used, so um, if you have oil in your skin, I have found so many times if I just rub my um, especially if you have a little lotion on your hands or the natural oils out of your skin. At this time of the year, not many of us have oil in our skin, especially our hands. I am going to do this in the first of all time because I want to get the sentiment, and I love to do my sentiments in the Versafine because they, it's just such a pretty, um, a very pretty uh, ink for your sentiments. Now I'm just going to press that down and I'm holding it. I'm trying to put even pressure on it. Oh, it lifted. I hope I didn't get a double. No, nope, I didn't. Very good. Now, I want to get um, a die. And I have some right here. Let's see what I have. Are these, these are circles. And I'm thinking a circle would be lovely on this card. So let's do... Let's see if this one would work. Oh yeah, that would be perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. So I am going to bring over my, my little die cut machine. This is my revolution. Absolutely in love with this die cut machine. I cannot say enough about it. Now I'm just going to center this over top. And because this comes with the magnetic platform, it automatically adheres. You don't have to tape. You don't have to do any of that. Oops. But then that moved it. Um, you just have to be careful when you put your top plate over it that it doesn't move it. So this time I'm be very careful. I'm going to set it down right over top of it, and then I'm going to crank it through. I'm going to do it one more time because that is an intricate die. And I will tell you the name of this die in just a moment. Look how pretty that cut. Is that not gorgeous? Like I said, I cannot say enough about this die cut machine. It is one of the best I've used, and I had a Cricut. I still have my Cricut. I uh, can't buy plates for it anymore, so that's the reason I wanted to replace it. And then I have the Big big Shot Plus that is very big and bulky, so it makes it hard for me to do videos with that one. But look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? So what I want to do is I think I want this up in the top corner like this. I want the bowl of soup over here. And our little spoon maybe right there. And I think I might put something right down the middle here. Maybe some, um, you know what, I wonder how this will look. This is a die that... I'm going to cut this out just for my own curiosity and see what it looks like. If this works out like I'm hoping it will, I think this might be lovely. And this will fit right here on that piece that we didn't use. I am going to clean my mat off 
so give me just a second to get all my little pieces off of there. And I'm going to cut this off camera just so for the sake of not having to come back over and drag the die cut machine. So I'm just going to leave this over here. I keep this die cut machine right to the left of my work surface, which makes it really easy to get to. Uh, makes it super easy to use. And we're going to cut this little piece out and see what it looks like across the front of that card. And I don't even know what this is going to look like cut because I have not used this before. I think I'm going to like it. It's very pretty. Let's get um, a little pokey tool out and see if we can poke the little pieces and make it come out. You have the little release pieces on your dies. Usually they're at the top of each one of the corners and that will help you grab a hold of it and be able to pull it just like so. And look at that. Is that not beautiful? It's just like little leaves and hearts and buttons and bows. How cute. I think that's going to be a beautiful piece right across the middle of that card. Now y'all are seeing me actually create this card on the fly because I wasn't sure of my measurements when I started this. I saw a picture of this card and I thought what a great little card to bring to all of you and bring you along for my my thought process of putting this together and I had no idea I was going to use this but I love it I absolutely love that I think it's so cute so I am going to do some little dabby dabby dabbies of glue um, maybe before I do that I want to pop this up on a little bit of uh, dimensional tape so I'm going to grab my uh, Scotch 3M and I'm just going to cut off a couple of pieces about about like that maybe a little smaller I think that's all we need on there and I'm gonna put this right here this corner making sure I get it nice and straight and I think I'm gonna do the same thing with this um, bowl of soup, but I'm going to glue this spoon. Did I get a clump in my glue just that little time? I think I did. There we go. So I'm just going to take that spoon and right on the end of that I'm going to place it right like that. And just let it adhere. And then I'm going to take a little piece of foam tape. Maybe I'll cut it thinner and a little bit longer. And I'm just going to press a piece of that right there and release it. My fingernails are working tonight. I love it. I'm going to put this right in the corner where that spoon is right down to the bottom corner and then I am going to glue this down using my glue. I'm just going to put some glue just over here and there, dabby dabby. Anytime that you're gluing down an intricate um, die piece, just come in and don't try to run your glue all over it. Just put little dots of glue because that's all you need. It's just some little dots of glue here and there and it will hold it and you won't have 
like glue oozing everywhere. cute is that? I love how this is turning out. Is that not pretty? Okay, so now I want to do a little sentiment in here. And remember I told you that I wanted to use um, Get Well Soon. And I think Get Well Soon needs to go right here in a pretty black ink. So I am going to load this up on my stamp block. I need a smaller block for that one because we don't have a lot of room to get in there and stamp it. So I'm going to get one like that and I'm going to put it in, down in the landscape mode. Let's see if I can get that a little straighter. Use your grid, your grid um, to get your stamps lined up and then pick them up on your block like that. And then they're more apt to be um, straight when you stamp it down. Uh, also, um, I'm going to stamp this up a little higher so I have room for a signature or whatever underneath it. I think that's always a good rule of thumb anytime that you're doing um, any type of card. You want to have a place to write your sentiment. Um, so I'm going to go right about here and I'm going to press that down. Even pressure. Nice and even, and get well seen. I also want to do a little bunch of flowers or something right here because I think anybody that's not feeling good, they need some flowers. So I just need to decide a little bouquet of flowers. And I, you know what I'm thinking? I have some flowers. Let's see. Let's see what I have already cut. And that's another thing. You can always cut things ahead of time and have them stored for yourself. And then when you get ready to do a project, you can just pull your flowers, um, butterflies, um, whatever it is that you have cut um, out of your, your little of goodies. And I've got so many little goodies in here. And a lot of these are very Christmassy though because they were a lot of Christmas stamp stampings that I did. So I might have to go a little bit further. This is a pretty little element, but see that's too big for the card. Anytime I'm playing around and I cut pieces, I usually will drop them in there's my little butterfly. That would be pretty on there. But I think he's too big, so we won't go with him. Another big butterfly in there, but he's way too big. <laughs> Let's see what we have here. Mm. We don't want to do poinsettias, and we definitely don't want to do snowman and Santa Clauses and the Star of David. We don't want any of that because we are past Christmas, and I don't think the pine cone will look good in there. So I'll tell you what. Let me put look over here and see if we got... I know I have some more embellishments over here. And just so everybody you know, I am back in my boot. Yes, my trusty, trusty boot. I went back to my, my orthopedic doctor today, and it's not real good news. Um, I have to go for an MRI tomorrow, and uh, we don't know anything definite, so uh, just keep me in your prayers, and I will definitely let y'all know what I find out is going on. Um, 
not to be too concerned right yet, but there's a possibility I might have a stress fracture around the um, I'll get it out in a minute around the um, the screws that they put my Achilles tendon back to the bone with. So that's why I've been dealing with a lot of pain lately. And we'll find out tomorrow. It might be next week before I know anything definite, but um, possibility I may have to go back in a cast if that's the case for maybe four to six weeks. Not exactly what I wanted to hear, but you know, I still praise the Lord because um, I was able to get in before the year was out to get my MRI, so that was a blessing. And always count your blessings. Okay, I think I'm going to pause right for a minute and find some embellishments for here. And I'm not sure what I want to put on here yet, but I've got lots of embellishments I can go with. So let me grab something and I'll be right back. Okay, folks, I'm back and I pulled this pack of stickers that I have. These, um, I believe these came from um, Dollar Tree and they are beautiful. Sorry. Um, <coughs> my allergies have still been kicking really, really bad, so I do apologize for sneezing. It's one of those things you just can't help when you feel it. And, uh, well, y'all know. <laughs> I'm going to open these stickers, and I am going to go ahead and pull them out. And I'm going to try to figure which one. I love that bluebird right there. I think that is lovely. I like that better than I do that. And when I first saw it, that one's pretty too. But I'm thinking this one right here. So I'm going to pull this off and I am going to center it right in the middle. I don't think it needs anything else. I'm going to bring my hand back behind the card and, and just press it down. I don't think that card needs a thing. I think it's a gorgeous card just the way it is. It came together really well. Um, hopefully I've taught you uh, another fold of a card. And this card is just gorgeous. And you've got a place here to sign. I think the colors coordinated really well together. I am very pleased with it. I hope y'all love it. I hope that you will try to make it. If you do try to make this card, please go over and share um, Share it on our Facebook group. It's um, Random Acts of Crafting by Kathy Champion. Just type that in the search bar on uh, Facebook and it, it will come up. And you'll have to request to join. And me or my administrator, one of the two of us, will accept you. And then you can post your, your creations there for all the rest of our group to see. So I do invite you, if you watch my videos, um, to please go over and become a part of our little crafting community. Uh, you can share ideas with other people. Um, if you have questions on how to do something, uh, you can leave your questions there. And if I don't know, I can, I can promise you there will be somebody in the group that will know or will find the answer for you. So. I just want to thank you so much for tuning in for this uh, tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed watching as much as I did making it. And I hope that you will try it because it is another wild card. <laughs> it has a wild factor and so easy to make. So um, give it a try. And if you want to scale it down to a smaller size, you can do that as well. Play with your measurements. Don't be afraid to try something new. You never know what you can do until you try. So again, like I always say, um, may God bless you, may he keep you, and be a blessing to someone else today, tonight, or tomorrow. Show your love, um, show your kindness and your concern for your fellow man. That's our commission. Our commission is to love others like Christ loved us. And, you know, we have that commission to go out and show that love. And I am so thankful that I can share the love of Christ through this medium. And uh, I just love all of you. And as I always say in closing, let everything you do and say bring glory to your Father in Heaven. 
God bless you always. I love you. Take care. Until we craft again, bye-bye. Thank you.